Hey guys, what's growing? It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. It is a rainy, cold day, uh, but I am out of the farm. It's Saturday. Um, and I've got crazy hair, don't care. At least it's clean. <laughs> so today we are going to be planting lilies. And uh, I need to scour the property to find a wheelbarrow because I need to go get compost out of the, the little hill of compost that's over there. It's going to be so heavy because it's sopping wet, but that's okay. So uh, planting uh, lilies today and, and if I have time, also putting in, actually scratch that because I didn't bring them out. <laughs> I have a tray of, oh no, you guys, this is not good. You see that? That is rodent damage. So they have de decapitated all of those sunflowers. Now those are the sunflowers for the curated sunflower collection, so it's not the end of the world, but they're chomping on my other ones that are actually supposed to go out in the ground. Mm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is sprinkle some repels all directly on these uh, containers and hope, 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 but that, that, that stops them for a bit because I can't afford to lose all these and I have nowhere else to put them. Little beasts. All right, and they're not touching the eryngium. I can't believe they ate all those. I don't even know why I'm bothering sprinkling it on those because The worst thing, oh no, those are euphorbia, snow on the mountain. Okay, well those are perennials. Maybe they'll come back. But these cosmos are actually for a client's yard. So, yeah. Uh, I really hope that this stuff works to keep them out. Um, I mean, obviously we have a lot of rodents in here, but what the heck? I mean, I guess it's possible that some crazy bird has figured out how to fly in here. We have one broken pane over there in the corner next to the fan. And then this whole door is broken. Uh, I mean, door. That whole panel on the right-hand side, the entire tall panel is gone. Um, but I really do think it's rodents. I think they're getting up here and munching on things. Ah, Jeez, you can't win for losing, I swear. Well, that back there is a total waste because those won't come back, I, I don't think, at least. Um, so I'll just have to restart those. The good news is I have plenty of seed, but so annoying. All right, so um, back to lilies. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I'm going to be growing them in this 4x4 bed, as well as these crates. Now, these are lily crates. The difference is between lily crates and tulip crates is tulip crates are only 7 inches tall come up to about here and lily crates are nine inches tall now this is very important because lilies you bury very very deep as as deep as possible uh, 10 inches deep um, because lilies form just a few roots on the bottom of their tubers of their bulbs but the rest of the roots that they form to, to hold the plant in place is actually along the stems of the plant so let's open a bag and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a bag of Lotus Queen lilies. Uh, this is one of the bulbs and you see there are roots coming out of the bottom. Now first of all this is a very advanced uh, bloom. So lilies in order to keep them from uh, sending up shoots you have to keep them at around 28 degrees in their peat um, basically in a, in a freezer. Um, Otherwise, they will start to sprout. They'll start sprouting at 30 degrees, 32 degrees. So these are very advanced, and I need to get them in the ground ASAP um, because once they start sprouting in the bag like this, um, you risk disease. So, um, all right, so they've got the, the roots on the bottom, but then as this sprout gets taller under the soil, uh, roots will form off of the stem of this sprout here and those are the roots that really anchor the bulb in place because you know lilies are very tall plants cut flower lilies very tall plants that need a lot of support so to prepare this bed um, it's already kind of deep enough I'm gonna 
flatten it a little bit, go on and place the lilies, and then I'll cover them all with compost all the way to the top. Now for these crates, I'm gonna do a similar thing, but I'm gonna line them with all this paper. So I brought all this paper from home. Uh, line them just so that the soil stays in, and each crate fits about 20 lily bulbs comfortably. Um, so spacing for cut flower lilies, about four inches apart, you can even go closer. And actually, if they're a little bit closer, like three and a half inches, um, they actually support each other uh, better. So we'll see how many we can fit in this bed over here and then um, we'll start filling up the crates. That was a surprise. Every, all 125 lilies fit in that crate. I think because I put them a lot closer together than I did last year, because I was brand new to lilies last year. So um, you'll have seen how I placed them all. They're all labeled. Uh, last year, <laughs> I put the tags in. Those tags are super small and uh, of course promptly lost the tag. So this year I learned my lesson. I'm putting these, uh, these big wooden stakes here and I'll be able to see them from the front um, even once they get tall. So the reason that I super saturated this bed was because the number one, the soil underneath that I placed the lilies in was, was bone dry, dusty dry, uh, because you know, it's in a greenhouse. And two, the compost that was outside ha did, had done what happens a lot with compost, honestly, is it formed a crust on top from all the rain and everything, and the stuff right underneath, like an inch of crust, was bone dry. So it was also gonna be hydrophobic at that point. So I put all of that in here, and then I super saturated it until water started running out the bottom. Um, so now I know that all the soil in there is wet, and uh, from now on, just, you know, watering it whenever it gets starts to look a little bit dry will be totally fine. But I wanted to make sure everything got super, super wet. So as I said, I ended up not needing the crates, and so what I did was I actually stacked them up against that broken pane area so that just in case something, because I know we have rabbits out here, the idea is that just in case something has come by, I don't have no idea how a rabbit could get up on top of this, <laughs> on top of this, I mean, this table is three and a half feet tall. But uh, anyway, I did stack those up over there. And I think even though I've never done this before and I've always been really against it, I think I'm actually gonna buy mousetraps. 
uh, we have so many rodents out here and what's going to happen is they're just going to continue to destroy things and uh, I don't currently have barn cats out here so yeah I think I'm going to have to set up some traps I just I can't afford for them to take whole you know whole harvests like that was what is that uh two four six eight sixteen plants of the euphorbia snow in the mountain which is a perennial that i was going to use for cutting uh for for foliage so yeah i just can't afford to have that happen um, especially since this is the only place i can store all these seedlings right now the home greenhouse is packed full so i'm gonna go get some mouse traps I will feel a little guilty about that, but I am definitely going to get the old fashioned kind that snap them immediately. I know have, people have said in the past, oh, use those glue traps. Oh my God, have you ever seen an animal get stuck on those glue traps? It takes them days to die. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's not humane at all. <laughs> so I'm going to get some mouse traps, set them out, and uh, yeah, it'll be sad to see them dead, but it'll also mean that my plants are safe. <clears throat> So the last thing I'm going to do today before I leave here, because I can't plant the dianthus since I left them at home, <laughs> is I'm actually going to harvest a bunch of ranunculus. Now, I don't have any place to bring these. It's not like I have a client I'm going to get them to, but um, <clears throat> I want them to keep producing flowers. Sorry, I'm <clears throat> I sound like this because I literally just choked <clears throat> on my own saliva <laughs> and I was having a hard time getting my breath. So it's taken me a minute to get it cleared. Anyway, I'm going to harvest um, as many ranunculus as I can because that tells the plant to keep producing flowers. And if you just let them sit out there, then it's going to slow down production. So I'm um, going to go do that. I'll enjoy them at home. And um, then we're going to head out, go buy some mouse traps, And I'm going to get home and work with my kids on cleaning up our extremely messy garage. <laughs> All right, let's go harvest some ranunculus. as many as I thought they were going to be um, but they are pretty and it'll be nice to see them I'll show you what they look like once they open more in the house um, so I think I'm going to wrap it up for today my battery is about to die um, let's see I think we're going to start working I mean it's going to be raining we're going to get more rain like at another atmospheric river basically on Monday and Tuesday today is Saturday tomorrow will be raining all day but not torrential so uh, maybe we'll get some work done outside I don't know it's hard, it's hard when everything's so muddy to work. And I get so anxious this time of year that things aren't gonna grow and I'm not gonna have enough for my customers. And I wonder if that ever goes away. This is my third year as a flower farmer and I still have that feeling of like, I did it wrong and nothing's gonna come up and I'm, I'm screwed and I'm not gonna have enough for everybody. And gosh, that's a horrible feeling. <laughs> Mixed in with excitement, but still, all right. I'm gonna take off. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.